Hey, is this thing on? <laughs> Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Dennis K and Stephanie K. So we'd like to welcome all of you to our YouTube channel today. Uh, for those of you who have been watching, you know this series is answering viewers' questions. And uh, today's question is one that I really have been giving some thought lately because it's going to maybe inspire you or help you a little bit as it helped us. But what do you feel has been a key to your success? And of course, depends on how you define success. So first I think of all, it would probably be an amazing supportive wife. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. 27 years married to this girl, I would put that as uh, uh, the number one success in my life. <laughs> But, um, yeah, how would you define success? Uh, going to bed happy, being happy with yourself and who you are, uh, helping your neighbor, and um, just having enough money to take care of yourself and not have to worry about things like that. Because um, when you don't have success in that way, it causes you to stay up at night and worry about things. So working to your goals so that you can become financially responsible enough to be able in this climate to help yourself and others. Mm, that's good. That's good. I like that. Because today, a lot of people define success as the money they have in their bank account, right? And that's not real success. I mean, a person could be very wealthy financially, but not have a successful life. They could have terrible family relationships. They could not like where they're living. They could be tied down to a job that they hate. Um, all Their sorts of things. Could go. Yeah, exactly. Their health could suffer because they're not taking care of themselves. So when I look at the question about success, I think for my viewer standpoint is how have we managed to pick up and uproot ourselves from the, uh, the lives we had in the United States Twice. and move abroad and travel the world. How have we accomplished that? What sorts of traits, habits, or activities have enabled us to, to live the life that we're living now, right? And to have the measure of success that, uh, that we are enjoying. Um, number one, I think it's looking for opportunities, but also taking advantage of opportunities and not letting them pass by looking for opportunities in places that you wouldn't normally look for opportunities mm. because a lot of people are like well I'm 30 you know and I trained for this job and this is what I thought that I was going to be feeding my family with for the rest of our lives but then you get an opportunity mm -hmm. to do your dream job might take a little bit of a cut mm -hmm. monetarily but you might be super happy mm -hmm. and go to bed thrilled every night mm -hmm. different things you have to figure out along with your family what will make you happy and what will make you happier. You might have a little less money, but you might be way more successful. Mm -hmm. Or by the, the, the converse of that is an opportunity could come up that you don't feel you're qualified for. Uh, maybe you're not trained to do it. Maybe you don't even know how to do this type of job, but with it comes the opportunity to work less hours and to make more money but you're thinking to yourself, ah, you know, it, it's a risk. It's a chance. Should I take it? Should I not? Well, you know, when, when Steph and I walked away from our normal lives, you might say in Michigan, um, we had great jobs. I had a fantastic job. We were living on the, on the bay on Lake Huron, um, had a boat, two cars in the driveway, nice bay house. But um, as many of you know the story, I was working way too much, you know, working overtime, even on Saturdays. I didn't have time to really enjoy uh, my home, join my friends because I was working too much. And we were super young. So I was having, I had an amazingly fun job and I made a ton of money as a waitress. And we worked, I worked in uh, Frankenmuth at the Bavarian Inn. So I wore a dirndl and a little hat and served family style German chicken. And it was fun. I wouldn't trade those years for anything. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I got to, I mean, I got to talk to a lot of people and everyone was on vacation. So they were in a happy mood and they tipped well. <laughs> and so it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. So, but that can be nights and weekends too. Exactly. So like you're working during the day, I'm working at night. We're not mm -hmm. seeing each other mm -hmm. as much. And with us, if we don't see each other as much, that's not satisfying. Yeah, it goes right. way down. So when we, uh, we decided to pick up and move, um, my corporate sales job uh, for a big automotive company wasn't going to translate into doing something in Belize, right? I mean, there are no corporate sales jobs in Belize. And so in the interim, uh, with a very good friend of ours, we decided to open up a decorative concrete business. Now, here I am 33 years old, right? 33 at the time, 
I have never done any real manual labor, not for work anyway. I mean, I might help my dad put on a roof here or there, but um, here I am starting to work uh, in a sometimes hot, dusty. It was in Florida <laughs> and I did it too. It was like manual labor. Manual labor climate. All right. But it was, it was new. It was exciting. And I thought, you know, I, I can't see myself doing this forever, but the money was good. And I learned a lot from that. I learned how to manage a business. Mm -hmm. Right now you have the muscles for it and the, you still have the muscles for it, baby. Thank you. Thank and you. you have like, you know, the drive and the go, and it was worked for the time period. Right. So that's a lot. So that little job, that little company that we started, that we kept active for about you know, two and a half years or so, that was instrumental in helping us to make the move because what we would do is we would work in the United States during the high season or the, the summer type season. So either in Michigan or in Florida for maybe three, three and a half, four months. And then we would put everything in storage and we would run back down to Belize and we would live in Belize for four five, six months uh, before we had to come back again and start up the season again. And uh, so we wouldn't have been able to get our start in Belize, even part-time, if it weren't for taking on that new opportunity, that decorative concrete job. Right, because very few people, especially young people, and even us at the time, have the amount of money to float for a year. You know, who's going to just say, hmm, let me just look in my, you know, portfolio and not work at all, but spend, spend, spend a lot of money setting up a new household and doing new things, even mm -hmm. though... Hattieville Belize is very inexpensive and it was an easy place to live as far as expenses, but we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. We had to definitely put a lot of blood, sweat and tears in that and it was worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And I taught you, you could do it. Right, right. So, but then we thought, okay, the back and forth thing is fine. And the reason I bring this up is because a lot of my clients right now, you're looking at maybe doing something else, right? You don't know what that something else is. And maybe the something else that you get involved in now isn't your long-term goal, but maybe it's a part-time uh, setup that you can say, you know what, if I do this for the next six months, a year, two years, then at least it gets me one step closer to being able to live abroad permanently. Um, yeah, because your life goal was not to be able to, I mean, as cool as it was to decorate driveways mm -hmm. because, you know, he made the driveways look like wine cellar floors with like inlaid amazing it was just a really cool job and i got to do a lot of the painting and it was you know an art form and it was beautiful but it was hot and you would burn out fast yeah. so it wasn't like your be all end all like oh you know i grew up and wish i could do this mm -hmm. it was a really cool thing to do but uh your little salesman working for a company for general motors type guy in an office it, it got it got us to Belize, right? It got us to Belize. So for all of you looking to make that transition, look for an opportunity. Again, it might not bring in all the money you need to live in Belize. Well, let's say you have a, a part-time job in the United States. Maybe you're cutting lawns and you can only cut lawns in the summer season, right? Do it, cut the lawns, bank the money, invest the money, then go to Belize for the winter and do that for a year or two or three or five, right? Don't be too proud. No, exactly. Yeah, and then- no yeah, I mean, hard work is something to take pride in. Yeah. There's nothing to, you know, yeah, it's, not about, it's not about the work. Even yeah. if, you know, let's say it, it doesn't matter what it is, but yeah. some of you are thinking, well, if I start this kind of business, it doesn't quite meet all of my needs. It doesn't matter. Start it, get in it, and use it as a stepping stone to something else. And the thing is, you don't know what that something else is yet because you're not there yet. The future hasn't arrived yet. So, for example, when we moved from Hattieville, Belize, in the mainland to the islands, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do for work in the islands, but I knew there would be opportunities if I kept my eyes open. We knew that we had no idea how to help Belizeans. So we knew that we needed to be where the tourists were and the tourists were on the island. We needed to provide a service or something to visitors to be able to help maintain us being able to pay rent. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know what that was, but we knew we would try to find it and find a hole and fill it. Yeah. So within a week of moving to the island, uh, we met what ended up being a, a very good friend of ours and got into the real estate business. Now, even that wasn't the business that you see today. That was working for one specific resort. Uh, we were selling just condos, just uh, fractional ownership condos, wasn't selling general real estate. And it was a very small niche market. And I thought, okay, 
let's get into this. This is a way, again, for us to stay what well, at that time, if we can just make our bills for another three, four, six months, we would have been happy. And right? we enjoyed it. It was yeah. a great job and mm -hmm. it was an awesome place. So And keeping our eyes open. After that, we started our own real estate company with a business partner. And after that, we just started to go from simply selling real estate to investing in real estate. And you're asking me about the, the key to our, our success. And I think if I had to pinpoint the, the major turning point in our life was before that, we had jobs, which paid well, which we, and we also sought out experiences. So I had small businesses, but the turning point for at least me is when I started to invest and to think like an investor, not as a consumer. So, so like an hourly yeah. type or be even being paid by the fractional ownership that you sell. Yeah, exactly. So before that, before I had this investor hat, I would make a, a nice big sale. Let's say uh, we sold a nice condo and a check came in for uh, $5,000. Well, I would get the check, I would come home and I'll say, Sweetie, buy a bottle of wine. A bottle of wine, pack your bags, we're going to Italy, right? <laughs> Remember that? You went to Italy, Morocco, all that. But the, I mean, yeah, yeah. those are fantastic trips. But here's the thing. Back before I had the investor mindset, I would make the money, the money would come in, and then we would spend the money on experiences, and then we're right back to where we, where we started, right? Remember that? Hungry for the next yeah, sale. Hungry for the next deal, you know? So when we started to look at investments, okay, made the sale, the 5000 came in, all right, let's go celebrate, let's have, have a great dinner, great bottle of wine, um, but now, instead of just spending the, the what was left over, uh, we would say, okay, what, what can we reinvest this money in? How can we double this money, right? Can we double it in six months, a year, five years? But when we started to think like that now, instead of just having one trip off of the sale or being able to pay one bill, now with a portfolio of properties, uh, we started to accumulate over the years. And really that investor mindset has sort of opened up a new, a new life for us. Yeah, because otherwise at the beginning of our marriage, you know, everyone has credit cards and things like that. And you think, oh, well, yeah, I can go to Italy and I'll just pay it off, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit at a time. That interest will kill you. Mm -hmm. So we've learned a lot of um, hard mistakes mm -hmm. over our investing lifestyle. And the nice thing, I think one of the biggest things about it now is you don't have to be hungry for that next sale because you've made a bit of success. And now you're just doing what you love, mm. which is finding the right people for the right piece of property. Mm. And sometimes you're like, you know, no, I don't think that piece of property is right for you. Mm. We'll wait until your beachfront or on the other side on Secret Beach is available. Mm. And when it comes in, I'll give it to you. So he really likes helping people and it makes him really happy to help people. So that is a form of success in my book. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to do what you love with people that you like Right. My clients are fantastic to work with. Every time I get on a Zoom call with these guys, I'm like, and Steph sometimes would be in the back room and she'll hear me talking. I'm laughing and having a great time. And she says, How did it go? I'm like, Oh, it went fantastic. And I tell them I all like about you guys. Yeah. Exactly. And I mm -hmm. tell them all about you, your kids, what you're planning on doing. And, you know, it just, we get excited seeing how you're excited about starting your new life. And what I think about it, you know, going back, Steph, is that we would never be in this position now doing what we're doing if we didn't keep our eyes open for new opportunities, right? Definitely. So uh, to answer the question, what do you feel has been a key to your success? Keep your eyes open for opportunities. You don't know when they're going to come into your life, but you have to, you have to take the steps, right? You have to talk to people, yeah. tell them what you're doing. Say, look, I need, I need something part-time. Show need, them your skill set. Yeah. Yeah. So like for, for me, I was in corporate sales, you know, I had nothing to do with uh, concrete engraving, you know, decorative concrete work, you know, but um, I had an idea. This idea can get me to where I want to go, right? Uh, in Belize, you know, selling real estate for a specific resort. I loved it, but that led to other real estate that led to investing. The investor mindset is what we have now. And I think that's one of the things that uh, helps us in our success, if you want to uh, put it like that, is we're not looking for the one-off immediate uh, what do they call it? We want instant gratification, instant, instant gratification, gratification. <laughs> right? So we're not just living just for today. We want to have fun today and we're going to, right? So after you get off the phone with you, we're taking a uh, tour of the British Museum via Zoom with some dear friends of ours. 
after that, we're going to uh, pop open a bottle of wine, have a catch up with friends. So, you know, each day we're going to try to squeeze out every little bit of fun and excitement, even in COVID-19, but we're not doing it at the expense of having future opportunities to enjoy times with friends and family and loved ones and new experiences, uh, all of that because of this investor mindset that real estate has helped us to, uh, uh, to, to do so. What do you think? I think you go to bed happy and, you know, health is a big thing. So, mm. you know, as long as we can be fairly healthy and happy and help others, mm. that's my definition of success. And, you know, I hope you can help other people gain their little bit of paradise and keep telling us about, you know, what you want and next year, next, you know, 10 years, let us know how that happened. And like what you found, are you a restaurateur now? Do you own a shop? Do you work at home selling, you know, bridal shoes? Who knows? You could do, you know, you could do so many things there. It depends on your bridal skill set. Shoes? Really? Yeah. Bridal shoes. Heck yeah. Who makes money selling bridal shoes? You could hand do on Etsy. I've seen these amazing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think, I think we're done. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button below. If you got your questions, please write them in, text me, email me. Looking forward to work with you down in Belize. Cheers. Bye.